they thought this was a good idea to simulate a zombie plague. Well, the big reasoning behind it becomes even more mysterious when I tell you. Well, it all starts at Alto University. This is a Finnish university where they went and did the details themselves and thought that this was a good idea to do and released his research. And so this comes at a time where the WHO just came out and said, mistrust, mistrust, lack of finances, poor accountability undermine world's pandemic preparedness. So this comes out at a time when things like that is being said. But even further, also at a time when the National Bio Agro Defense Facility, which where the Nazis offspring is at from Operation Paperclip, they're actively talking about they're doing things for the livestock of America's entire food process, you know, situational aspects that we're dealing with. So they're doing a lot of different programs as we speak right now on pandemic preparedness. But when we go into this Alto University research, why was it so important to do this? Well, when you look on screen, you see right now all the livestock and everything else, and this is from the National Bio Agro Defense Facility. But this was one article saying, zombie uprisings can help us predict how future pandemics spread. That's what they're saying here. But when we go deeper down into the actual models, you get to see a little bit more of what the scenario says. It goes in to say, zombie plague simulation, Finland zombie outbreak scenario created by scientists to slow down next pandemic study, October 29, 2023. Pandemics are viral disease outbreaks that spread throughout countries, regions, and continents worldwide. So they're saying that this will help slow down the next one and then they use another term that they've came on and said recently when we was hearing about the next big thing coming so i bet the operation paperclip nazi lab scientists are just rubbing their fingers right now and that's actually the picture of operation paperclip as well moving further down to the study it goes in to say a placeholder named disease x to represent a hypothetical future pathogen that could cause the next pandemic now scientists in finland created a zombie plague simulation for the country and compared it with the spread of a real world pathogens which include viruses bacteria that can cause world's next pandemic the finland zombie outbreak scenario resembles how authorities will fight and slow down another global pandemic wherein disease x poses the greatest threat now they're making it sound like disease x is a zombie virus but i don't think they're actually saying that i think that they're weighing it out on so many levels that it, they're kind of making it seem like that's what it is. We go further down into it though, and um, here's the article it goes in and says, learning from the undead, simulating zombie plagues in Finland could help slow down next pandemic. And uh, it's another study here, and it, I showed you the map here just a few seconds ago. Uh, we'll go into it. And the crazier part is, is another part. You know how during lockdowns in 2020 how they had to say oh you're a denier you're uh you know covid denier and all this stuff so there's another phase to the story that they had to simulate as well based on kind of that scenario but let's go into reading a little bit of this it says alto university are investigating how zombie play was spread through finland it's a light-hearted project but it offers serious insight into global challenges such as containing pandemic or coping with disinformation Simulation suggests that zombie appear in Helsinki, however, there will be just seven hours to completely quarantine the capital or kill zombies. Otherwise, zombies will inevitably overrun the country. Moving down into more of it, it says, the research expands traditional epidemiological model by adding simulation of people and zombies moving around in Finland within the Twin Cities. The use of individual-based simulation instead of population scale model with spatial components enables the research team to model things like quarantining an infected region or the dif difference between a zombie plague starting in a densely populated capital region or much smaller cities elsewhere. So it looks like they have everything laid out here in every evaluated scenario. Now I'm going to the part where 
they talk about how you know what if we have deniers of this and what if the deniers is a problem what if the misinformation is a problem I'm gonna read it right now uh, I'm looking at it it says the difficult moral questions are familiar uh, it says the zombie plague simulation offers let's just pull up on screen now uh, familiar from COVID, the zombie plague simulation offers a way to explore the effects of different interventions considering them in context of diseases which different features such as how quickly they spread or how severe they are because it simulates individuals actions it can also be used to test how distance from mission this information would be affect uh, the spread of the epidemic by having some zombie deniers ignore warnings so obviously what does that mean that means I guess well somehow if it was actually going down then then it was some video pop up and we we're gonna be like man hey, that stuff is not real so they're actually weighing out whether they can see the trajectory of how if I guess it happened they would actually be able to predict who would be like oh okay this is this audience of people here would think is fake and this audience of people here would think is real how it misinformation how can we basically control the full flow of the aspect and understand every aspect of it so i mean they kind of like analyze a little bit deeper into this study it says large number of human zombie interactions that have to be simulated makes this model computationally intensive says uh, natalia Veselinova, the postdoctoral researcher who heads the computational side of the project. To cope with this, the team came up with a simpler but still realistic model of the interaction that lets us run the simulation with less computational power or simulate larger scenarios with similar computational resources. So in every aspect of all this going on, you ask the question, okay, so what makes this so important for them to need to do right now? I don't know, and the fact that they add disease X to it just makes it even more mysterious. The zombie uprisings helping them predict the future is also another red flag in this story that I'm reading here to you. So like I was saying, the National Agro Defense Facility is where they're actually getting ready to prepare disease preparedness, and then they're saying this here. Uh, the review team made of experts uh, identified facilities across the country each will host scientists to work on this project scientists will work on evaluating and developing diagnostics for animal and zoonotic diseases the agency added partnership will collaborate across organizations calculate local regional and national international threats they will ensure laboratories have the tools necessary to diagnose emerging threats so and they show all the labs that they're going to be doing this at right now it's New York. It's going to be one in uh, Michigan, Virginia, Arizona, and Washington. So that's the recent goings of what they're pretty much already planning to do. And so, again, this study that came out, we wanted to look into it with you because it just a lot of different things here. I mean, I get it. People were saying like, oh, it was going to be the 5G that was going to activate the zombie virus and stuff. And that, I'm not like... I wasn't sold on it because the emergency force situation, I knew it wasn't going to just pop up and like, oh, it's going to happen like that. Well, when we talk about Network X and I'm telling you about Network X and it's a neuromorphic network and it's one of the you know, largest newer platforms that the leaders around the world and most comprehensive, they say that they're using and China just got a, 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 they won some offer of money with ZTE for Network X. So Network X is gonna be neuromorphic, meaning that it's like a manipulation network, some type of network where it manipulates either something to do with internal brain waves or other things like that. So we have to learn even more about that to know more about the bigger story that lays at hand. So we wanted to just pull out the simulation because lots of strange stuff going on. We wanted to, like I said, blocking a lot of different uh radio rf shielding and stuff like that that's important uh having a hat basically with rf shielding to protect your blood brain barrier that's another solution um just the whole aspect of how they're going into the laboratory now and then making these simulations because you know it's, it's really became to this point where they're just doing everything and anything you know they're pushing forward a war they want to push forward a pandemic 
they want to push forward uh, the Great Reset. They want to push forward uh, the Cyber. Everything is basically for them. You know, until 2030 hits, I feel like now they're just going to keep going full-fledged ahead pretty much with anything possible. And we can read more of this report where they're talking about this lack of trust and poor accountability undermine the world pandemic preparedness. Well, obviously, because we can't trust people like y'all. Reading more into this report, it says the world's preparedness for the next pandemic is perilously fragile with gaps that leave us dangerously exposed to the future, according to Global Preparedness Monitoring Board. 2023 annual report released on Monday. We lack the solid foundation needed to ensure current efforts for preparedness can be brought together to build an enduring bridge of state of security. Basically, they're saying like they can't protect anybody. So at the end of the day, how is how is it anything to do with trust if you could protect somebody whether they trusted you or not you could do it but they try to blame it on that and try to say oh that's why we can't do it and it's going to be poor accountability and all lies all lies so again we just want to play this report out because uh they did this just in october and a lot of people didn't see it so we wanted to put the report out and you tell me what you think about this and uh get it out to others and let them see what's actually going on thanks for tuning in